Hello. I'd like to give you this copy of these books. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's very good. Oh, well, yeah, that's one of your critics. Yeah, I this know. is one that's more about. There was a new book written called Dianetics by a rather reprehensible individual named Vox Day. And if you want to find out what the ethno nationalists think about me, that's a pretty good read. Um, I wouldn't. It's a pretty good read. So <laughs> that, was, that was pretty amusing. Of course, um, this is the book they're talking about, Jordanetics. Um, if you're interested in it, you can pick it up. It's not called Dianetics. Dianetics was the original fake religion created by uh, L. Ron Hubbard. Jordanetics is the fake religion that Jordan Peterson is in the process of trying to create. And so uh, I th <laughs> yeah, some people were saying, oh, well, he was, he was lying about the title. And maybe, I mean, I have no idea. I don't pretend to be able to read his mind. But what cracks me up <laughs> is that the, I like to think that it was a Freudian slip, that he meant to say Jordanetics, but it came out as Dianetics. The interesting thing, let me show you this here. Look at the title very closely. Do you see where it says, you know, Jordanetics? You see how there's that sort of white, uh, almost sunrise appearance? And we did the same effect on the back. Um, I love this quote of Jordan Peterson's. Falsehoods have consequences. That's what makes them false. And we, we actually did that intentionally because we wanted to evoke. If you look at the cover of Dianetics, we actually wanted to evoke that. But what's funny though, is that uh, I was just talking to our production editor and we're actually going to move uh, forward by Milo Yiannopoulos down. Some will probably put it on here somewhere. And then up here, we're gonna put a nice big quote saying, a pretty good read, Dr. Jordan Peterson. The other interesting thing about this is that Peterson did exactly what I said he does in the book. He talks about ethno-nationalists. Ethno-nationalism is redundant. There's no such thing as ethno-nationalism. There is only nationalism. Nationalism derives from the verb nati. In Italian, uh, when you say uh, you know, when you say dove nato, it means where were you born? You know, I was born in Boston, sono, no, sono nato di Boston. And so nato is about those who are related by birth, those who are related by blood, those who are of the same ethnicity. And so ethno-nationalist means na NATO nationalist. It means national nationalist. It's redundant. And so, um, <laughs> see, this is funny. Lewis Hopgood says, you are positively glowing for being noticed by Jordan. Congratulations, sir. You only had to be obsessed enough to write a book about him. See, the funny thing is, last night the narrative was that I would be crushed by the fact that I had been you know, dismissed and called reprehensible. And now it's, oh, because you're amused by this, then, then it's, it's proof that you're obsessed. Let me be very straight. I don't care at all about Jordan Peterson in and of himself. He's mentally ill, he is going to hell, and he is an extremely evil man. He is dedicated to globalism, he's dedicated to the end of Western civilization, and he's dedicated to the destruction of the United States of America. I'm not obsessed by him. I despise him. I think that he is a disgusting intellectual charlatan, and I have unmitigated intellectual contempt for him, as you will understand if you read Jordanetics. So what's interesting, though, is that he referred to me as being reprehensible. On what basis? 
on what basis? You know, he might not like me, he might disagree with me, but reprehensible? That's a pretty fascinating view for somebody who doesn't appear to know much about me. And it's interesting because there's no there there. It's just pure rhetoric. You know, I can tell you why I think Jordan Peterson is mentally ill. He's mentally ill because he's on drugs. He's been prescribed drugs in order to treat his mental illness. I can tell you why I think he's evil. Because he is uh, teaching a philosophy that is based, at least in part, on combinations of Nietzsche, Crowley, and other occultists. I can say very clearly why I believe he's anti-Christian, because he has never confessed with his tongue or believed with his heart, to the best of our knowledge, that Jesus Christ is Lord. I can give you reasons for all of those things. I substantiate, I substantiate those reasons in Jordanetics. On what basis does he call me reprehensible? We don't know. It's just rhetoric. And, and the reason that he did this, somebody said, well, why, why would he do this? You haven't even been paying attention to him. But the information in the book is now circulating actively among his followers. He knows this. And he's trying to figure out a way to stop it without having to confront it directly. He doesn't want to confront it directly because he can't confront it directly. I'm going to read you some... The total inability of Jordan Peterson's fans to even address directly the issues that are raised in that book. Uh, the James Fox Higgins show says, In Australia, used to say, we used to say, What's your Nasho, mate? But now that's a racist question if you're right. Exactly. What's your, what's your nationality? Enrique Lau says, screw JP, men like you and BB, that would be Owen Benjamin, the big bear, brought me closer to Christ. JP elaborates on biblical lectures, but does nothing except spread stupid traditions of men, lies, and confusion. I watched part of his biblical lecture that Owen had on his stream about two months ago, and it was really remarkable for the fact that it had almost nothing to do, nothing at all to do with the Bible. Jordan Peterson doesn't know much about the Bible. He started talking about the Bible before he'd even finished reading it. He started teaching about the Bible before he started teaching it. And so it's just, um, it's just ludicrous. I mean, Peterson, and I'm going to get into this at some point in time, um, to explain just how evil his attack on family and identity is. But, you know, we'll, we'll save that for another time because I, I want to, you know, go deep on that one. But here, listen to, listen to some of these reviews. These are recent reviews. These are the most recent reviews from uh, the, the, the one-star reviews on Amazon about the, the book Jordanetics. Vox Day is a moron. Vox Day is a bigoted right-wing conspiracy theorist who essentially thinks Peterson is not right-wing enough, not Christian enough, and not racist enough. This book is an exercise in ironic lack of self-awareness. An anti-intellectual charlatan accuses a legitimate thinker of being an anti-intellectual charlatan. Good for a laugh, I suppose. What you'll see in these reviews is just nothing but rhetoric. Nothing but disqualification. Misrepresentations. The author is misinformed, has gross misrepresentations. Using his own assumption premise, one can only assume that are just downright lies in order to sell a book. What we also see is that most of these people are relatively low IQ. I mean, we're talking in the 95 to 105 IQ range. They, try, they use these words that are not even particularly big words, but they don't know how to use them properly. Uh, Nothing more than a personal vendetta for perceived slights. The only refreshing aspect of the book was that it was criticism from the radical right rather than the usual radical left. It's not a personal vendetta. And for, for perceived slights, Peterson had no idea who I was when I wrote the book. 
It's ridiculous. Um, parasitical fraud. The attacks are fundamentally based on Dr. Peterson's unwillingness to participate in identity politics and therefore platform a racial agenda on the back of his own professional reputation. I'm not going to spend real money reading a guy tearing down a respectable academic's career. This is a hit piece. Right in the review, <laughs> right in the review, he says he doesn't read it. Um, the James, Hawks, James Fox Higgins Show says, I'd like to see such critiques of you from JBP and his devotees in E-Prime language. Good luck, buckos. <laughs> I would too. That would be amusing. Um, Anti-Semitic at best and a true rally for atheists. This should be taken off of Amazon. Vox Day is as alt-right as you can get. I find it amusing that, number one, they think Peterson's a Christian, and number two, they think I'm an atheist, or that my that my attack on Peterson is because uh, I'm, I'm... Yeah. A bunch of fake news. I mean reviews. How many of these reviews are from people who aren't Vox Day cultists or other writers associated with him who help each other out by giving good reviews? It's all so phony. See, what drives them crazy is the fact that the book has something like 85 or something like 80 five-star reviews, many of which are long, detailed reviews that, that actually address the content of the book itself. Rubbish book, unreliable and basically a vendetta. This rambling and jealous attempted takedown of one of the greatest thinkers of our time, <laughs> I can't believe they actually quoted said that, is a waste of money. Vox's incoherent writings, copy-pasting YouTube transcripts, and misquoting of JP's book's talks are just part of the problem. Just to be clear, there is no misquoting whatsoever. Every single quote is precisely 100% accurate. As much as I am conservative and would rather like-minded individuals band together than take each other down, given the power of the left, I'll call out rubbish when I see it. Using Milo for the forward, seriously, the bloke is merely jealous and his own career is sadly falling apart. I do like Milo, but Vox, like Milo, appear to come across as having some personal vendetta. Notice the theme, again. Um, that's all this is. Unfortunately, yes, JP's made mistakes. We all do, but they're not worth crucifying him for. Again, focusing on, focusing on the personal stuff, focusing on the jealousy stuff. Um, so now, let's look at, at the real reviews, the actual reviews. Great takedown of a charlatan. Peterson sounds all right at first, but he will teach you to be weak, deceitful, and compliant. Vox Day explains in impressive detail, an important case well made. So, so they're actually talking about the book. They're not talking about me. They're talking about what's actually going on in the book. Another one says, this one is, is really good because it actually refers to what's going on with the reviews. Systematic breakdown of Peterson's core ideas and assessment of his character. Notice how the one-star reviewers are claiming jealousy on Vox Day's part in order to dismiss his systematic breakdown of Peterson instead of pointing out any factual errors. Exactly. They don't point out any errors whatsoever because they aren't errors. They aren't there. They behave exactly like the very SJWs they criticize who bring emotional accusations to logical conversations. If you pay attention, reviews by verified purchases are almost unanimously five-star, while the vast majority of bad reviews, which are significantly outnumbered by them, are by people who haven't bought Jordanetics, much less read it. You can't review something you've never read because that's not what the word review means. But Peterson himself could very well argue, well, it depends on what you mean by review, eh? So maybe this is the Petersonian tactic of redefining commonly used words to make a ludicrous position seem reasonable, which Vox Day exposes beautifully in Jordanetics. And then he talks specifically about the book. Vox Day's critiques of Peterson and Jordanetics are extremely methodical and clear and peppered with a healthy dose of humor. He uses Peterson's own words as the basis of his attack, analyzes the very sources that Peterson himself cites as the foundation for his claims, 
then shows you step by step how Peterson has twisted the original meaning of his sources to fit narratives that are wildly inconsistent with the sources themselves. And that's just scratching the surface of what Vox Day breaks down throughout the book. Anyone who says Vox is making anything other than a clear, logic-based attack on Peterson doesn't see the obvious irony that Vox's language and method is far more clear and concise than Peterson's ambiguous and foggy ramblings. Now that is not just a positive review of the book. That is a review that actually talks about what the book is. And that's what a book review is supposed to do. <laughs> David Porter says, did you write that? No, I didn't write that. Yeah, I mean, just so you understand, I was the only professional game developer who was allowed to review computer games for Computer Gaming World, despite their policy against that, because the editors had sufficient trust in my integrity to know that I would never, ever modify my review of someone else's game just because it happened to compete with mine. I am not going to write reviews of my own books. That's just flat out never, ever going to happen. Um, you know, so the thing is, is that unless and until you read Jordan Eddicks, you're not going to fully understand what Jordan Peterson is about. You're not going to understand the depths to which he has delved into the occult. You're not going to understand how the philosophy that he is teaching is fundamentally and intrinsically evil. Not just, oh, but it does good things for people. It, it's not going to do good things for anyone. Even if you think it's doing something good for you, it's not. What Peterson is doing is he is giving people who are failures a philosophy that allows them to feel content and satisfied with failure. And he's doing so because he believes in preventing war by destroying nations. His whole goal is to prevent war. Remember, he's mentally ill. Is totally, totally, totally obsessed and is totally afraid of catastrophe. He's totally afraid of war and other tribulations of the sort that are coming. You know, we publish There Will Be War. And Dr. Jerry Pornell, the late great Dr. Jerry Pornell was right. There is going to be war. The diversity wars of the 2030s, we hope, are going to be some of the worst wars in human history. We're talking about the kind of wars that haven't been seen since World War II, since the 30 Years War. Um, it's going to be really bad. Um, and so it's, it's just something that we're going to have to, something that we're going to have to deal with. Um, humanity has, has gone through a long, long period of peace, but that period is running out. So I'm far from the only person who sees this. I'm far from the only person who understands this, um, Many, many military historians know, um, other people, socionomists like Bob Prechter know, and that's what's coming. And so Peterson lives a philosophy of fear and suffering, and he's terrified by this. And so he's desperate to try to come up with a way to prevent it. But as people often do, they turn to the very things that, you know, they help create the very things that they fear. Now, these things are coming whether Jordan Peterson ever opened his mouth in public or not. 
It has nothing to do with him. It has nothing to do with me. It doesn't even have anything to do with like the George Soroses and stuff. The Soroses and Petersons make it worse, but the historical trends, the great historical trends are inevitable. And, um, but you have to understand that that's what Peterson's trying to prevent. And that's why he's always weeping and he's, he's a wreck. That's what terrifies him. That's what gives him nightmares. And so he's desperately trying to stop what he sees as the end of the world. But it's not the end of the world. Even another dark ages, to the extent that there ever was such a thing, is not the end of the world. War and tragedy and human suffering are part of human existence. They're the unpleasant parts, you know, but that's the price that you have to pay for the lunacy of the last 60 years. Uh, the James Higgin Fox show <laughs> is, is on fire. He says, I'm reading and analyzing Jordan Eddicks on a weekly live stream on my channel and comparing to JBP's book. I used to see JBP as my internet dad. Now I see him as my weak, weird, and unstable internet uncle. Well, you know, send me the, email me the link to that. I'd love to uh, send some folks your way, um, especially those who are less inclined to reading. Um, they might find that very useful. They might find those comparisons very useful. And I, I think that you've probably seen because you're analyzing it and comparing it to 12 Rules for Life, you can see that everything is taken directly out of there or out of Maps of Meaning. You know, it's, it's, it's not my imagination. Uh, Muffhead says, hello, Vox. It seems like being a true nationalist requires being in favor of repatriation, a truly messy potentiality. Well, yes, mo well, not all nations require that. There's plenty of nations that haven't allowed themselves to be invaded um, and, and set up these major fault lines for conflict. Um, but yeah, most of, the, most of the nations that have done so are facing the long-term choice between mass repatriations and civil war. And, you know, that's a tragedy. That's, uh, it's one of the biggest tragedies in human existence, I believe. So, um, you know, the, the, the open borders crowd is going to have an amazing, amazing, uh, culpability for a tremendous amount of human tragedy.